Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I'm just a hacker having fun. In the previous video, I showed you the conceptual model of the Antic Disassembler. In this video, I'll actually show you how I put the disassembler together, how the individual words work, and how those words combine together to produce the final product. But first, let's actually go ahead and show you what the final product looks like. I'll go ahead and go over here to my Atari emulator here, and we will use the word display to do the display list to show me the current display list. Now, I know the current display list is at BC20, so I use that as the parameter display list. As we can see here, uh, it, dis it disassembles the display list one byte at a time, showing you symbolically what each piece is, including the three blanks at the top, the mode 2 LMS instruction pointing to BC40 after that, a string of mode 2 instructions, and finally the JVB at the bottom. But how do all these pieces fit together? This is actually made up of a handful of different words, which we'll see now. I'll go ahead and switch to decimal mode real quick and list screen 60. Screen 60 is here on drive 2 and what we have here is the beginning of our antic disassembler. Now I wanted the words that I define here to be a part of my antic dictionary so I said antic definitions here. I also wanted to make sure that I was working in hex while I was compiling these words, so I set the base here. I keep a copy of the base and then set the base to hex right here. The very last screen does the opposite. It takes and pulls base off of the stack and resets it back to its original base. Rather convenient. We create two constants here for jump and JVB so that we can reference those two mnemonics entirely by their name instead of by their number. As you can see here, if I use JMP here, it puts, 40, uh, it puts 0, 1 on the stack, and the dot removes it and displays it. The same thing with JVB here. You'll notice right here that it showed 65 instead of 41. That's because 41 hexadecimal is 65 in decimal. So if I do you'll see that it's 41 there. Now, the next set of words are simple words that do conditional tests. Now, the most efficient way to check to see if a uh, to check to see if particular bits are set or if a particular set of extra bits are set or whatnot is to use the AND word here to mask off the bits that we don't want and only return the bits that we do want and check against those. Simple, right? So let's say that we have the AND instruction and I'll show you a little bit about how the AND instruction works. It takes two parameters on the stack and it returns a one, uh, it returns the ANDed result of those two numbers. So 0, 0, AND returns of course 0 So as you can see, a logical AND. Just a simple way to take and mask bits off. We use this to basically take and check against the bits. Now you'll notice that there's only one parameter here over to the left hand side of the AND here. That's because the other parameter is implicitly taken off of the stack. Since I'm not literally putting that number on the stack, I'm taking whatever happens to be on the top of the stack and using that as one of the values of the AND. So, uh, I basically can now check, instead of having to type in that whole long line of AND here, I can simply say, is this a jump? Sorry, make sure we're in the right place. Is this a J, is this a jump? This isn't a jump. Is this? JVB. That isn't, etc. Same thing for H scroll, B scroll, etc.
and so on and so on and so on. The special one here is of course blank because we want to make sure that none of the bits down below are set and only the top four bits are set. So and what we have here we're basically checking it against zero because once we mask off the bits that we don't want here it's going to be zero if nothing down below is set and we check against that simple enough moving on we have a word to check for jump instructions and the way that this works I'll go ahead and walk you through since this is actually made up of a whole bunch of different words here. This is a nested this is a nested if instruction. Now, ifs are very special. Um, they're made up of just they're, they're just fourth words like everything else, so they take bits off of the stack. So you put the parameters that you want to check against off of the stack uh, on the stack first and then you if against it. So this is why it looks backwards. So, uh, for a jump, we pass in a particular operand, and we duplicate it. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually turn on the fourth vocabulary so I can get my stack printer so you can see the effects on the stack as we walk through this manually. I can't use the if word interactively, so I'm going to simulate it by taking and viewing the val values on the stack while it's consuming them. Because each time that you use an if statement or a conditional, it will consume the value that you feed it on the stack. So if you want to test against it again or use it, you'd better duplicate it with dup. So, starting off with, make sure we're in hacks here, 42. We dup, and we look at what's on the stack here. Well, it's not a zero one, so it's not equal to zero one, so it returns a zero. In that case, we test against it again. Because the if consumed it, we take it off the stack, and we're left with that again. That's not a JVB either. So we know that by this time we just basically need to take and drop the value and return zero back as part of our loop. So jump essentially Sorry, hex. Returns those values to if it's a jump instruction of some kind, a JMP or a JVB. And we also make very sure that we don't leak anything on the stack. This is very important to test. And it's why we have these drop instructions here, to make sure that we don't leak any unnecessary values onto the stack. We want to consume and return exactly what we need to return, and not have anything extra. Is 3 byte is somewhat similar. We checked to see if it's a blank instruction of some kind. It is. So we basically take and drop the value on the stack. Stack's now empty. And we return 0 as our value. Let's try this with a 2 byte instruction here. 
42. We check to see if it's a blank. Obviously, it's not. So we check. We so we do the next thing. We check to see if it's a jump instruction of some kind. It's not, so we consume it. I use the dot here to simulate the if. We swap the value. Dot jump. And it is an LMS. So, sorry. Try that one more time. <laughs> It's a bit interesting to, to step through this while I'm trying to try and, while I'm basically trying to do this. We'll do this one more time. <laughs> Apologies, folks. Let's try that one more time. 42. Is it a three byte instruction? Let's find out. It's not a blank instruction. So we're left with 42 again. We duplicate it again. We check to see if it's a jump. It's not. So we swap the value. Bring it to the top. And we test it again to see if it's an LMS. Now look what happened here. This conveniently put our values in just the right order for the OR instruction and a logical OR, if either of those bits is on and we do an OR against them, we're going to get a 1. So there's our return value. That's how it works. As you can see, with this, what we essentially have done here is compactly represent a logical construct in as few bytes and as few words as humanly possible by directly manipulating the stack to our advantage. Moving on to screen 62. Now we start seeing the different prompt words. Mode basically takes a, an instruction and displays its mode. Rather simple, don't you think? We can go ahead and show how it works. Uh, hex and as you can see it just displays the mode right there straight to the point etc 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 the other thing is extra bits and once again we're using the concept of the uh, duplicating the value before we pass it on to if so we can test it again and again and again and finally take and show off each individual piece as we find it so extra bits you pass in a mode value and you get back the appropriate mode bits let's say all the extra bits were turned on you'd see all of that of course as we all know that's rather kind of fictitious but there you go um so that's how those two work